Hey everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions, and this is the review of the D Link DCS 832LH Wi Fi security camera. What's actually in the box? First of all, we have a quick install guide. Then we've got a rubber seal that goes over the Ethernet or Ethernet port or the hole where you would actually plug the cable into. More on that later on. You've got mounting screws and cable ties. You've got the power adapter and a 3 meter cable, as well as obviously the device itself, the full HD Wi-Fi camera. Now, as I've said in my previous D-Link videos, this camera and cameras like it work alongside the My D-Link app. This is the app that you're going to use for all of your D-Link smart home products, and it's just a way to centralize them and bring them together to allow them to work together. So for example, I'm using an existing D-Link hub, which has multiple smart plugs, two other cameras already configured, and I'm just adding this on top of. But you could not have any of these devices, this is how you would add it as well. If you take it out of the box and plug it straight into power, and let it just set itself up. If it's on the same network, what it will do is when you open the D-Link app, it will recognize that there's a camera ready to be installed, and then it will ask you to go through the wizard. So that's using the camera to go over the QR code, and then it will set itself up, join it to the same network, and it's just very, very easy to add to an existing or brand new setup. If this step doesn't work, you can manually do the QR code. That's probably one of the biggest selling points when it comes to this camera is that it's just so easy to use. Anyone with little to no technical background are gonna have no issues setting this up. It really is the case. Now I could give you the dimensions and I could give you the measurements of the lens and things like that, but I think the most relatable and way to understand how big the camera unit is, is the size of a Coke can, to be honest. It's like a Coke can sat on a stand. That's the size we're talking about when it comes to this camera. Now the main use of this camera is gonna be an outdoor camera, and you're gonna put it above your door so you can have it on an outside view of your drive, your the side of your house, wherever you want to use it. It doesn't have to just be an outdoor camera though. Although it is weather resistant and it is designed to do that, you can use it indoors. It's a camera at the end of the day. And the reason why it's advertised as a weather resistant one is because its main use is designed to be outside. Doesn't mean you have to. What does the camera actually have on it, as in on the device itself? While looking at the face of it, there is a light sensor so it knows when night mode needs to be activated. There is a full HD 1080p resolution lens with 135 degree field of view. You've also got a microphone as well as a status or status LED. For example, when you first plug it into power and it doesn't have connectivity, it will flash orange to indicate that it's ready for initialization. You've also got a cable clip at the base of the camera. This is obviously used to tidy away the long cable that's included. On the back, we have the reset button. We have a micro SD card slot that supports up to 256 gig. You've got the power connector, and an ethernet or ethernet port. And on the very bottom of the camera, we have the mounting plate. Towards the base of the camera, there is a screw or a mechanism to change the angle of the camera. So if you loosen it, you can adjust it and then tighten it back up again to place the camera in an angle that you would prefer. This is so you can basically point the camera where you need to and keep it in place. Okay, so in terms of its design, it's a very simplistic camera. It doesn't have the 360 rotation that we've seen on other cameras, and it doesn't have the cool mechanism for the camera lens to close and open. It doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that you would expect from a modern gadgety camera that we're used to seeing. However, it's a solidly built camera. There's no component of it that feels cheap and flimsy. The moving part of the base where you tighten it to change the position feels very secure when you tighten it up as well, so that's very reassuring. The lens and the status lights look really good. The material outside isn't going to be prone to fingerprints, although you won't really be touching the camera once you've set it in place. Hopefully you're going to do that all through the app itself, rather than actually handling the camera. But yeah, I, I have no complaints about the build quality and the design. You literally have a place to mount it. 
You have a solid cylindrical looking face of the camera. It's got a good weight to it. It feels very well made. You can't really ask for more. Now let's move on to the software component that's arguably the most important and the brains of the operation. Here we go. Built into this camera is AI technology allowing it to easily identify when a human being walks in the frame. Person detection as it's called. You can go into the settings of the camera and increase or reduce the sensitivity as well as the field that it's going to detect. For example, if you're pointing a camera at an area that only a certain part of that area is where the activity is or people walking past, you can actually define this with a grid that you use and you move with your fingers to then define, okay, I only want the camera to detect movement or activity in this specific location. Obviously, if you want people to be detected, however, if someone quickly jolts past, you don't really want to pick it up all the time. You can actually increase the sensitivity or decrease it. Decreasing the sensitivity will obviously make the camera not pick up as much as it normally would and increasing it to the max will give you a lot of results that you don't really care about. It's there for you to tweak. You can also configure sound detection so you don't always have to have the camera on the lookout for movement or video. If a loud bang happens or some audio that's not the normal level you can have this trigger a notification or an automation response very easily. The core functionality of this camera does work on an if this, then that approach. I don't mean the tool that you can use to link everything together, although you can if you want. What I mean is, it's very much, if the camera picks up A, then do B or C. So if it picks up a sound, you can have it send you a notification or start recording, or you can even sound the alarm, or all three of those. It depends entirely on what you want to do with this camera. And obviously the more options you have, the more complex and the more customization you have when it comes to using this camera. And that is a really, really cool feature of this MyD-Link software, which opens the doors for a range of different possibilities. As I mentioned before, this does have a 1080p 30 frames per second functionality. However, I did find that when you open up the viewfinder of the camera, you have to use the settings at the bottom to change this to 1080p, because it seems to default on 720. This is probably to save space on your SD card or wherever you're saving your footage. Speaking of that, the SD card settings allow you to format it just in case you plug in an SD card that's not the right format. You can format it in the software and be ready to go. You can also choose to back up to a NAS drive if you want. That's using the ONVIF software that's kind of heavily integrated with NAS drives and other surveillance systems. I won't get too much into that, but it's there for you to use if you want to. If you feel like going full cloud, you can take advantage of D-Link's cloud solution, but it is going to cost you money. Links are in the description if you want to read up about that, so you can potentially know what you're getting yourself into. There are pros and cons for everything. Obviously, local storage media has the problem of it can be stolen. There's size limits. It's not always going to work because it's physical hardware going into hardware whereas cloud storage is off-site and more secure however you need a constant connection and there could be issues there whether or not you store to an sd card or the cloud or somewhere else again depends on what your requirements are and you'll make that decision before you've even watched this video anyway what i found quite funny was that in the documentation i was given just highlighting all of the key features so i didn't miss anything was that the 95 decibel siren wards off intruders and alerts you to a detection. Now, I get that this is marketing material. However, this isn't going to scare anyone. Maybe the fact that there is a siren is going to shock people to go, OK, they've seen me or they know I'm here. But the volume of it is not going to scare anyone. It's just a minor thing. It's no biggie, because in reality, you're probably only going to use the siren as a form of, hey, I know you're here, rather than this is so loud it's going to startle you, because that's not the case. It's a cool addition though, on top of the already impressive image quality, as well as the software that it uses. Night vision can go up to 5 meters, that's 16 foot. So even in total darkness, it does a really good job of picking out 
who's walking by and you can see them fairly clearly. If you have the camera outside above a door for example you can actually use the speaker system so on your phone you can press the button speak into your phone and the sound will come out of the camera. People aren't going to know what to really do when they hear a voice coming from nowhere until they look up and see a camera so if someone walks over to your door that's not a threatening person and that you know them you can actually just take your phone out and say hey sorry I can see you just arrived give me 10 minutes and I'll be right there. And if you really want to get fancy with home automation and things like that you can set up Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant and all of these smart home technologies or software that you would tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis with this camera. You might need to configure certain third-party applications like if this then that but the end result should allow you to do things like okay Alexa enable home protection mode on and begin recording or something like that some phrase you can program that phrase so that when you say it the camera will enable start recording initiate certain automation rules and again just a range of different complexities that you can configure quite granularly with a camera like this and the software that's included. You've probably read online about smart home technology and you really can customize and tweak it to your heart's content to make your home yours because after all no one's going to have the same sort of setup as you and the same sort of requirements. This is just a workspace and an environment to allow you to achieve what you're trying to get to for home security. Overall from my time using this camera I have to say it integrated seamlessly with my current setup and even when I tried it on a new setup it just worked and that's all you can ask for for a seemingly intimidating area of technology to get into that's home security and automation. It makes it very easy for the average Joe to use and understand. Build quality I have no complaints Maybe the stand could be a bit larger with a longer component to allow you to adjust it in a slightly higher formation if you want to move it indoors because obviously its main focus is outdoors. But again, I can't pick fault in the design. It has a stand, it has a camera on top and a wall mount. It doesn't really get too complex and it doesn't need to be. Sometimes simplicity is key. And here is an example of that. One negative I can think of when it comes to software is that Obviously software is always changing and if you have heavily reliance on software that's on a mobile phone or a mobile device for that matter, you do lend yourself to the risk of there could be an update that causes some issues when you're trying to load a camera, this and that. It can become quite temperamental, especially if the updates are rolled out on a frequent basis. Also, to be completely honest and upfront, I have found the app to be somewhat slow here and there. For example, when I come out of one camera, go into another device that has nothing to do with it, then I go back to that camera, it tries to reprocess it again and tries to load it. And it, there is a noticeable tiny bit of lag when it tries to load it again and switching between various modules within the app. Nothing that's going to make you say, oh, I don't like this app, time to uninstall. You'll just notice that over time that it's not snappy. Snappy is not a word that I would use. For this app at all. Completely functional, gets the job done, easy to use, you can see everything that you need, if you're not sure where something is a few clicks will get you there, it's just not the snappiest of applications, that's all. Overall who would I recommend this camera to? Well first off who I wouldn't recommend this camera to? I wouldn't recommend this to somebody that has a way higher end surveillance system setup that maybe has a lot more local storage and a premium cloud subscription to some high-end storage capability and you need 4K recording or high quality sounds and a way more serious alarm. This isn't high-end enterprise edition hardware at all. This is somebody that just wants to take their home security that bit more seriously, doesn't want to break the bank and just wants to get it done easily without having to get too technical. Well, for those people, I really wouldn't look too further away from this. Yes, there's going to be competitors out there with similar setups, but I've used various different D-Link software and hardware now, and I have to say I've been very, very impressed with it. Yes, it does come with bugs in the software, as I just mentioned, and yes, maybe it would have been nicer to have a sharper image quality, 
because the image quality of this camera is great, but it could always be better, like everything with video technology. You always want that bit more crisp or that slightly brighter here and there. You don't really care about the ultra high resolution camera until you need it. So it didn't really cause much of a concern for me because if you're gonna to have to look back on the images, then this camera does an absolutely fantastic job with no complaints. But you could always have a nicer image quality with whatever lens we're talking about. Also, they should just try and make the camera cable as long as possible. Because obviously, if you do that, that's your only limitation then, because this is a Wi-Fi camera. So if all you have to worry about is the size of the power cable, you might as well give them a big power brick and just make the camera cable as long as you can, obviously hardware permitting. This is a really powerful camera that fits in great to a lot of smart homes and you don't necessarily have to already be in the D-Link environment or ecosystem. This could be a brand new camera for you and provided you've got the My D-Link app, which is free to download, you can get going straight away. Check this camera out if you're somebody looking to take your home security a little bit more seriously, but don't want to spend too much money and don't really want to go all out just yet. You just want to test the waters with basic camera security and basic camera functionality. Go and have a look in the shop yourself if you can. Ask to take it out of the box. Have a see if it's right for you. See if it's going to look okay if you mount it to your wall or to your room or wherever it's going to go. Don't just use my video as a recommendation or a reference point as to whether or not you should get this. Go and check out other content creators videos on this. Leave them comments, ask questions too, because I'm all for having multiple points of view when it comes to reviews. Hopefully I've expressed what this camera's like, what it comes with, why you would get this, what features it has, what the build quality is like, what the application's like, and the rest is your decision. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the D-Link Full HD Outdoor Wi-Fi Camera, specifically the DCS 8302LH edition. Thank you for watching.